In this video, we're using AI to create a killer movie poster starring you. All right, let's get into it. All right, as we start this project, the first thing we need to know is what our movie is about, because that's going to tell you about the aesthetics and uh, the type of poster that you're creating. I wanted something that's uh, an 80s style poster, which means I wanted it um, in the style of... Uh, these these realistic character uh, characterized illustration a collage style these were very popular in the 80s um, and since I'm a horror fanatic fanatic this is going to be a zombie movie so it's going to be zombies 1980s and collage style here we are in Photoshop. I have, uh, I created a document. Uh, typically, uh, movie posters are 24 by 36 inches. The main aspect of this poster is going to be our main character. That's going to hold um, focus and that's going to be the center point of the poster. To do this, I'm using my leading lady, my wife, Sarah. I trained a model within Dream Booth of her, have rendered that out. Here's my Dream Booth, um, setup some of the settings i used um i max step training steps were 1500 i used 50 images and here is my prompt um color photograph of x y x r s that's what i named the model so basically that's her name 1980 sexy hot cute seductive big hair happy flirty female woman attractive Dramatic composition, studio, white background, illustration, zombie movie poster in the style of Drew Struzan and Norman Rockwell. Um, typically, you know, I I rarely put in um, artist's name um, as far as a style. I'm using this as an example today because I really need to dial in on that style because I'm going to be jumping from different AI packages. Uh, we're going to be using. Um, Dream Booth, we're going to be using Dolly, well, Dolly and um, uh, Stable Diffusion and, um, did I say Mid Journey? Mid Journey. Anyway, we're going to be jumping across these different AI packages and I really need to have a dialed in style. Also, I put in negative prompt of naked, nude, black, black and white and hands. Uh, I didn't want any of that involved. And this is the image that I was able to get out of Dream Booth. The only thing with Dream Booth is I wanted it to be more zoomed out of the portrait. Um, so I had to get into the next step. And the next step was outpainting. So this is um, what I used for outpainting. Um, this is through a collab. So anyone can use it. You can use it for free. Um, this is Stable Diffusion Infinity or Infinity Canvas. Of course, I'm going to put links to all this um, in in the um, in the notes. This is uh, the image that I used, and that's what we're going to uh, throw into our our poster. What we're going to do here is we're going to bring in our image of my leading lady. So I also ran all my elements through Gigapixel, um, just so you know. Um, here is our outpainted um, version of Sarah and it needs some touching up um, we're going to place that into our file and let's do a couple things let's get rid of everything um, that we don't need and to do that we're going to use our um, object selection tool all right there's the selection um, we're going to use uh, our button to create a mask a layer mask and boom everything that was outside of that mask has been deleted Let's go into our mask. I just double clicked on our mask and let's just hit our refine hair tool. And, and that cleans up the mask a lot. Um, I'm also gonna use our refine edge and just go over the edges of the hair. Um, I'm doing this because she's gonna be cut out over, over the image. So we wanna have a, a pretty complex mat around her let's output this to a new layer with a layer mask that way we're being non-destructive and i'm going to create another folder in here and just call it let's call it junk that way i'm not deleting stuff and that's our junk layer and we're going to hide it we need to touch things up a little bit here 
Um, her hair is looking a little chunky in spaces. Let's go to our layer mask and we're gonna paint on it. Um, and it's uh, black, we'll hide things. So if I do that, like um, we're hiding, white will reveal and gray will do a, the middle. So we're gonna undo that. I am going to use a, make sure my brush is, uh, let's just go full soft. It's okay. So we're just going to clean up the edge there with a full soft. I, I see some garbage in here that, that can get tightened up. That's good. Um, we're going to clean up down here. This is looking really good, though. So there's some chunkiness on the hair over here. What we're going to do is um, we're going to go into our brush dynamics put on our our, um, our shape dynamics. I'm using a Wacom. You, you can um, change this from pen, pen pressure to a fade. Uh, I'm gonna use pen pressure because it's a Wacom, it's a Cintiq. And I wanna break up these edges. So uh, the way I'm gonna do this is we are going to get in here. We're gonna make this a little bit harder since don't need it that much and and what we're doing here is we're just breaking up the edge. Brush strokes you're using are following the, the lines of the hair. All right. And that side was really bothering me. See, now you zoom out and you get this nice, nice look to it. And the other side looks pretty good. Uh, there's... This we can take off uh, the shape dynamics, get rid of this black layer or whatever this weird texture is. All right, we're going to touch up her hair just a little bit more because um, it has some, some really high contrast in it. This high contrast gives it kind of a plasticky look. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate um, the layer that she is on. Um, so it's uh, Control J um, for duplicate. Uh, we're going to get rid of the mask. We're going to delete it. Uh, we have, and it brings back the whole whole background that was being matted out. We're going to go filter, and we're going to go blur Gaussian blur. Uh, Sixteen pixels. That's great. Say OK. Now we have this blurred version. We're gonna go back to our create layer mask. We're gonna hit alt and then click on that button and it gives us a completely black layer mask. Now let's get our brush and start painting in some, some white that will reveal. So right now we're starting to reveal the blurred out version over it. And what that is doing is softening up some of these high contrast areas. I am just going through and wherever I see this high contrast, I'm kind of painting it in, painting the blur in, and it's just softening it up just enough. I mean, the other thing is when, when you have like these softer blurred areas around the face, um, it uh, it brings more attention to the face because the face is more in focus. Um, so it's actually adding, um, it, it, it's good because it's adding focus and vignette to her facial features. All right, so we have uh, that blurred out nicely. Here's the before and after. And we just took off, you know, some of that just really alias high contrast uh one more pass what we might do is um let's create another layer above this and let's uh with a very small soft brush pick the highest highlight in her hair that color and let's get a really small brush um so we'll go down to, I'm just gonna put a couple of highlights in here so it doesn't look too flat. We have these nice highlights. Ooh, who wouldn't want that hair? I'm going to take all of these layers, except for my background layer, I'm gonna hide that. 
and I'm going to do Alt uh, Apple Shift E, and that puts all of those on a new layer. So it kind of it combines the blur, it combines the cutout, and it combines the highlights we made. And now we just have this layer. Now with this layer, what we have to do is let's get in and do a little bit of liquefying. As I say, uh, the way I did the the out painting created weird perspective with her arm. So we're going to get a really big brush here and we're going to just slowly move this in. Make sure we're not giving any weird shapes. We're just slowly moving this arm and fixing the perspective that that we got. And maybe I can even bring it from this side. I don't want to go too much because liquify can create some weird weird stuff just reshaping this arm there we go all right and another thing with liquify is we can give a since it's the 80s we can give a little bit more volume to the hair so maybe ai doesn't understand how big hair was there we go they just need to have an 80s button on this okay let's see how that looks here's the after there's the before all right so what i want to do next is let's get this uh poster moving sometimes it's nice um to have borders and when things break borders it 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 helps the eye kind of track around um and that's a design aspect i'm going to use right now let's create a uh rectangle uh i created a rectangle path i'm going to go to the path and i'm going to go uh stroke path I'm going to use the brush tool. Say, okay. Boom. All right. We have a nice rectangle. I was about to call it square. Uh, we're going to move this around a little bit. Let's. So uh, if we go to these three dots, uh, we're on a transform tool and we're on canvas. So now we're going to center that. And let's center her just to see. Okay. And you're centered. And now I'm going to uh, let's go right about here. I'm, I'm eyeballing it. Um, she needs to be in front of this. And I want the top of her head to break this border. So um, we're going to transform her. And that's a... And, um, Alt T, and we're going to move her up. There we go. Now, I think what I want to do is just, I don't want it that, it'll be that big. And we're going to have other elements that are coming in here. So, right about there. Perfect. Now, what we need is let's get a little text here this is a uh, zombie movie that's going to be based in my hometown um and one of uh the the landmarks in my hometown we have this cool creek called Payne's creek and doesn't that just sound like a horror movie so we need though to find a good Lehman that is going to be our font so let's take Payne's Creek and we're going to center it on the screen let's bring it down I want it touching this black um, border this kind of gives me the vibe of of a um, wrought iron gate at a cemetery that's kind of the vibe i'm going for on this so let's uh let's put it down on it so it looks like it's a part of it um again this needs to be beneath our character um because i want her in front of it, it gives a little depth to, to the design too uh 
and make sure it's centered on page. Okay. Um, needs a little bit more. So let's uh, grab text again. And this time I want to use an ornament, uh, Rufina. So when you use ornaments, it kind of like throws this this uh, pre pre loaded thing. Let's take a look at what we have here. And these are all different characters. So I'm going to grab right here in the middle. And we just need that one character. And I want that over the Payne's Creek. And now I'm going to duplicate that character. Um, there's a couple ways. Let's just do uh, command or Apple J, uh, and then we'll move it over here. Uh, now we're going to do Apple T to transform, and I'm going to right click on it and flip horizontal. All right, now we're going to take these two characters. They're on two different layers here. We're selecting both of them, and we're going to now align with selection. And let's align them centered so they line up together. Uh, I'm going to push this guy over until he touches. Again, I want the vibe of a, a um, wrought iron fence. So now those two are touching. Very cool design element there. Let's grab these two and group them. Apple G. Uh, G. They are grouped. Now we will center them to the canvas. We'll see how this looks. Okay. So that may be select, uh, centered to the canvas, but optically it doesn't look good to the Payne's Creek. So we need it. There's two different uh, in design. You have optical um, centered or optical alignment and actual alignment. Actual alignment isn't working for this, so we're going to go with optical. I'm going to push it over. Oop. Make sure my group is selected and not just one independent. And I'm going to line it up with the center between those two words. And then I want these touching, so it looks like, you know, with wrought iron, uh, all the elements have to be connected while still being legible. So... Um, now I've connected those, and look at that. We've got this kind of cool, gothic-y um, thing uh, going on uh, that is giving us the vibes of a uh, wrought iron gate that you would find at a uh, cemetery. Let's add one more element. Um, go. Uh, we'll go back to our text tool and grab Bodani ornaments. Let's grab some of those. Um, these have a real good vibe of wrought iron too. Um, might not be what it is, but you know, these are design elements I would I wouldn't be surprised seeing in wrought iron. So I create uh, created this this leaf, and what I'm going to do is rotate it almost 45 degrees and we're transforming and I want that overlaying and right in the corner. All right, now we need another one of those. So let's duplicate that layer and move this new duplicate over here. And we're gonna uh, Apple T's to transform. Then we right click on it and we flip horizontal and we put it in this corner. And make sure it overlays. Things are looking good here. We got our frame. We have our main character. Uh, now, as I say, this set in uh, my quaint New England hometown. You know, a lot of uh, these posters, um, they had different elements. They had your character. They had um, the location. And, you know, usually they, they depict a, a definitive action scenes from, from, um, from it. But they also give the location and you know, the setting and, you know, there's, there's a lot to take in and they were designed so that people would study the poster and, uh, wouldn't just pass it by. They would, they would try to, they would spend time with it and then they would remember 
the 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 movie. So uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to create new element, and we're doing this in Mid Journey. We are creating a New England town. So here is uh, the element um, that I created. Here is the prompt I used: long distance panorama photograph of New England town skyline. Dramatic composition, studio, white background, illustration, very detailed, hyper-realistic action movie poster in the style of Drew Struzan and Norman Rockwell. I did 16 by 9 because I, I wanted it wide. And uh, quality 5, style 4C, that's our image. So let's bring that into our um, composition. And there, there she is. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that in. We need to mask this out. I don't want the sky in there. I'm going to rasterize this layer. No need for it to be a smart object for me. I'm rasterizing it first. Uh, let's grab our quick selection tool, or object selection tool, not quick selection. We'll use the cloud. And let's um, try and cut out the sky here. See how good we can do. We're going to go around the town. Do -do 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 and see what we can do well let's just make our layer mask first we'll add our layer mask all right it it's going to take some cleanup uh let's get our brush uh 100 percent um and let's get in here and uh paint with black so we can hide these elements of the um, the sky that we don't want. Good. And it's basically, it's like non-destructive erasing. Boom, boom, boom. Clean this up. We're going to clean this up. All right. Let's double click on our mask. Let's push our edge detection up by uh, quite a few pixels. And now I want to shift it because there was like a little halo around our town of white. And I did not like that. The other thing I want to do is I want to select this tool, the refine edge tool, and go around these trees. I mean, we can go around all the edges, to be honest. Just And look, that's going to give us a nice detailed, oh yeah, that's going to be good. And this is this is going to help us in the composite. You know, okay. Especially around those trees. See how that looks. Okay, but... Um, yeah. Um, we're going to paint a little bit back in here. Our clock tower is, is disappearing. So uh, with white, we're going to go back in here. And uh, we're just going to have to clean up this mask a different way. We're going to clean up the edge of this church a little differently. Matt on the church here. And we're going to grab our pen tool because that will give us nice straight lines. And we are just going to go up and around. This is illustrative and a little loose. So I am taking some liberties with what I'm keeping and what I'm getting a rid of and down to here. I think that is good. So we've made this selection around the steeple of the church. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, right click on it and we're going to say make selection. Uh, 0.5 pixels feather radius, that's fine. Say OK. Now we're going to go uh, select inverse selection. We're going to grab our paintbrush, make sure we're on our matte layer, and we're painting in black. So now I'm going to paint over these edges and I'm going to get rid of that halo. Don't go too far into our tree. Put a lot of effort into that. Um, and there we go. We got rid of the halo. We can go Apple D, D selects. Apple zero zooms out. And there is our town. All right. So how are we going to use this town? Let's uh, select our town. 
and go filter, neuro filter, harmonize, turn on our harmonize. So select our main character, uh, our, our beautiful woman here, and we're going to select her as our, as our choice layer, and we're going to turn uh, the strength to 100. And what this is going to do is it's going to match the the color uh, toning of um, of that layer. So these kind of lay in the same same space. They're gonna they're gonna blend much easier. There we go. So you see it it warmed it up and 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 put gave it the same color palette. So we're gonna say okay. And now that is the correct colors I want. Um, capital D because I don't need it selected. Now this is uh, this is also where we're going to start giving depth to our design. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it behind our main character. Um, now I'm going to realign it and I want a little bit off to the right. This steeple comes up and I, I don't want it over this. Um, I want to make sure I'm not getting any weird um, alignment issues. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. You know, sometimes when things line up, like like right here, the, the edge of the steeple lines up with our border, and it looks weird. Um, so I want to have space there, but I also don't want it touching her hair. I like that layout. But now I need something on her other side. Instead of rendering out a new element, um, I'm going to duplicate this element. I'm going to move it. The the new copy, I'm going to move it over here. And I think I'm going to right click and flip horizontal. Now this is going to give kind of a creepy, weird perspective. Because now it's it's flipped and it's giving like a messed up um, per perspective point. So let's see, I just wanna, I just need a little bit of this on this right side. I wanna make sure that I'm not putting something red behind her hair because I want her hair to kind of pop. Uh, that's a nice building. I think we're gonna leave that there. Okay, so I'm gonna commit to that change. Um, so now I'm going to go to the mat of this new one gonna uh, put, go to my brush and I want to paint black and I want a very large paint brush so right now I'm I'm deleting um, I'm erasing elements that you could see on the right side from the left we have our town I'm gonna take these two town elements and I'm going to Apple G to group them um, here we go. All right. So we have our character. We have our location. As I say, this is uh, a horror movie. So it's a zombie movie. So we need some zombies. All right. So um, to create our zombie horde, I went into Mid Journey again and uh, I created this element and I used the prompt long distance panorama photograph. So this will kind of lay in with our background, our town. Um, photograph of a zombie horde, dramatic composition, studio, white background, illustration, very detailed, hyper-realistic action movie poster in the style of Drew Struzan and Norman Rockwell. Um, it's a 16 by 9, quality 5, 4C. All right, and uh, here's, here's our horde of zombies. Um, they don't need to be that detailed. Um, if you look at some of these old posters, you know, they're very expressionistic. First thing I want to do with this is I'm going to select this white with a small brush, 100%, and I am just going to paint over that line to get rid of it. I'm going to do the same thing down here. And, all right, so now we just have the horde. Um, now another thing, now we need to select the horde. So we'll go to our object selection again, draw a lasso around the whole horde, and see how that does. It got it. All right. 
So now we're going to create our layer mask again, and it's cut out. I love it. Let's uh, let's select our mask and let's give it a, a radius of like nine, and just maybe we'll just shrink them. That's better, much better. All right, these guys are way too big, so we are going to scale them down because we want this to be a horde of zombies. So let's go right about here. A little bit bigger. We want them a little bit legible. And the other thing is um, I want them to cross the whole scene. And again, we're, we're building... Um, depth here so these zombies are going now these are going in front of um our character so we have the location behind her we have her and now we have the zombie horde in front let's render out another version of that same prompt all right so i rendered out um the same uh the same prompt out of mid journey um i i just did uh Give me a variation of of the prompt that created this horde of zombies um and i created a new one um that will be just enough where it's different and people you know you're not going to see repetitive patterns in inside of our horde so let's place that guy and we're going to select the whole group of the zombies give it a minute Let's grab that mat and give it a good edge detection and shrink it in a little bit. Say, okay, good. Now we got to get it to the same scale as the other one. These guys look like they're about the same scale. And that looks good. Wow, look at that. I can almost line these guys up, which is perfect. Wow, that's awesome. It's like this guy fits perfectly. Like we hit enter. And those look like they line up. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is take these two, uh, both horde groups. And we are going to group them. Um, I'm going to take this guy and I'm just going to get a, a brush. I'm going to paint the mat just... Uh, 20% there's like a line that's showing up uh, let's get it no B 20 we're just going to soften this so we can get rid of this line just okay that that looks good all right, we've got our zombie horde. Uh, let's grab the group, Apple T, and make sure it crosses the whole of the poster. Look at that. That looks pretty cool. Okay. So now what we're going to do with our zombie horde is we have... Um, let's see. Can... Nope. Okay. So I have to select, uh, select each one and do the filter, neural filters. And we're going to harmonize it with our main character. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to do this. 
Same thing to use. Those look good. There's our zombie horde. Okay. So, um, our next step, that's pretty cool, but, uh, you know, it's just a, a big crowd. Uh, our next step is, you know, we like to have a, a, a definitive scene from the movie. And of course this movie hasn't been made, but, um, I'm one thing I really like is muscle cars. So I thought I would put a muscle car in there, black 69 Camaro SS in the style of Drew Stuzon and Norman Rockwell, uh, landscape 16 by nine. Bingo. All right. Hit enter. We're going to commit to that. We're going to mat it out. Um, quick selection, do a cloud one and just go around our beautiful Camaro here. And let's see if it nice. And we're going to hit our make layer mask. And that is masked in nicely. There we go. There's our Camaro. Now, with our Camaro, we got to do the same thing. We want to go filter, neural filter, harmonize. You see, we're harmonizing everything back to our main character. She is determining our colors. There we go. Oh, that fits so nice. So what we're going to say is okay. That Camaro looks bitchin'. It's a bitchin' Camaro. <laughs> yeah, all right. Zero. That's Apple T. Now I want to resize this. I'm going to put this Camaro. Um, I want it a little bit in front of our zombie horde. Let's just say that that Camaro is... going to be a character in our um, in our story that looks cool very cool as I said uh, when when des designing these uh, one of the things is to have a a um, depict a big scene from the movie so uh, in this you know, a big scene would be our main character being chased by zombies. So for the next element, um, I'm depicting uh, the the action scene, the scene from the movie. Um, so what I did was I rendered an element um, of a red-haired woman. No, she's going to be smaller, so so the fidelity with her facial features don't, doesn't need to be as intact. It's going to re people are going to assume that it's the same person. Um, the prompt I used was uh, color panorama photograph of a woman uh with long hair running uh long red hair running full body scared big hair female woman attractive dramatic composition studio background lighting illustration very detailed hyper realistic action movie poster in the style of drew screws on and norman rockwell 16 by 9 um and this is the image that i went with um she does have an extra leg, but we're going to take care of that. Um, we're going to amputate. All right, here we go. So let's see. Uh, we're going to accept that, and let's let's see how our object selection tool works on her. Um, wow, look at that! Got it right out of the bat. I didn't even have to to uh, to to circle or anything like that. Here is our selection. Uh, we're going to make our mat. Let's get in here. And let's hit refine hair. See how that does. Get our edge selection. And we're just going to go all the way over. Because I think the hair could be improved a lot here. Let's just add to her leg. Because, oops, may have added too much. But. there see how that did oh look at that beautiful uh she has this third leg which we do not need i'm gonna paint that out we're going to select her again we're layering we got the horde we got the car in front of the horde 
well, we, we've got the town, we've got her main portrait, then we have the horde, then we have the car. Of course, she's going to go in front of the car. But what do we have to do? we got to go to our neural filter, harmonize her with our character. That may have added a bit too much contrast. It's weird that that doesn't work out all the time, but hey, sometimes... So I want her smaller. I'm going to put her. She can be off to the side here a bit. You know, she's in front of the car. She's running from the car. We're using rough perspective, but... Um, That looks pretty good. Something didn't work here. So we need to go in there and fix our brightness and contrast. Um, when I hover over the, uh, the brightness and contrast that was just placed above her, I get this arrow, um, then I click, and that connects the brightness and contrast only to that level, because I don't want it adjusting any of the other um, uh, parts of, of the composition and I'm going to pull the contrast down. Um, I also noticed I missed part of her leg. I gotta fix that. I think we need another adjustment. Um, the saturation. Again, um, holding all. I'm going to... I'm pulling the saturation down. And I think I need one more adjustment um put a curves on her and i'm gonna go to the blue channel and take the down a little and up a little reds up a little green that's green can stay human saturation we can go to the yellows maybe Okay, and I'm just sliding our saturation a little and just making sure these sit and they're warm enough uh, with everything else. Let's clean up that leg mat. So we're going to go onto the mat and we're going to hit our brush and Did it not select brush? Brush. And we're going to get rid of that. Excellent. Just going to check over these. Great, she looks good in there. Let's take our running girl and group her. Now, um, if you're just looking at this, you may get the the idea that 
she's running from a crowd. Um, you know, maybe it's, you're not, um, reading it as, as running from zombies. Um, so we need a hero zombie down here. Um, and I rendered one out. There we go. So this was our, our hero zombie that I wanted to use. Definitely gives the idea that it's a zombie. Photograph of angry zombie, blood, dramatic composition, studio, white background, illustration, very detailed, hyper-realistic, action movie poster in the style of Drew Struzan and Norman Rockwell. Um, and this was in a portrait orientation because I just wanted his head. And look at that. Very cool. Let's select him. Rasterize the layer. Uh, use our object selection. And what I'm going to do is go all around. I want to make sure that I kind of get his shoulder here. Go up and up. Gonna select all of that. Very good. We're gonna add our layer mask. Uh he's a scary one. Um, let's go into our mask. Make sure his hair is refined. Very good. We can go over that one more time. Just see how that works. Oh, that's good. Look at that, man. I'm amazing. God, a couple years ago, it was so hard to do that. So now uh, we have him matted out. Let's select him and go fill neural filters. And we're going to harmonize him. We're going to say, okay. Lean, apple, T. And we're going to shrink him down. Um, right click, flip horizontal. And we're going to put him in the corner here. Let's see. And he is going to be right over here. Oh, look at that. Uh, make sure everything is... He's just fitting in there perfect. And now we know that horde of zombies is... our zombies. Um, I want to get my brush. I can be a little rough with this. Um... Let's give it a half hard and just kind of get out some of these pieces of his hair that are white or weren't matted correctly against the car. And then over here, we're just painting real rough so he sits in there. And oh, that looks good. Okay. Um, let's go back to this layer, which is our frame, and we need to add a mat to that. Um, give me, uh, a black. I want to, for our frame, I want it erased on the bottom. I don't want, um, that showing up on the bottom, so I'm going to have a brush that's going to mat out the bottom of of our framing. Uh, very good. I think our next step is to add a little bit of texture. Rendered this out of uh, Mid Journey. Um, it's photo photograph of very dark cloud, sky, weather, very detailed, hyper-realistic. In the style of Drew Struzan and Norman Rockwell uh, in, in a 16 by 9 format. Gives us some sky, gives us some texture, 
that. Um, hit enter. Let's bring it up. Filter, neuro filters, harmonize. Yeah. Oh, see, this is going to sit way in the back just for some some texture I'm scaling it up I really want to get the cloud texture and hit enter that looks awful the way it is we go all the way to our Well, not bottom, but now we're just going to bring this in super faint. Where we just barely see just a little bit here and there. Um, this is going to need to get matted. We're going to create a mat for it. Uh, for this mat, let's... I'm just going to cut it right at the bottom here. Um... I'm on the mat layer and I'm going to use the fill and I'm going to fill with black. So it just cuts out the bottom because I just want the sky up on top. Gives a little texture be behind her. Um, all right. So let's start bringing this whole thing together. And it's one thing. So a movie poster needs one thing and, uh, I'm kidding. It needs a lot of things, but, uh, what's, What's really going to sell its auth authenticity is when you go in and place a the billing credits. So I downloaded this off the internet. Um, you can go in and create a, um, you know, you can go into Illustrator or Photoshop and, and kind of use the basis of this and create an authentic looking one yourself. Um, so let's uh, place embedded and we're going to, here's our billing credits. There they are. You recognize these, right? These are going to go down here at the bottom. Um, we're going to, we're going to multiply these so that they're should be right about there. Uh, see, now, doesn't that just make it look like a, a movie poster? I need to grab everything except for, I don't want the background sky. We're just going to move all of this stuff down a little bit. I want to move her down just a little, little bit. There we go. Good. And you'll notice also we're, we're creating this. And this is popular in um, photography is having triangles. So we have character, character, character. Like having triangles when you're doing group photography with multiple people is a powerful composition um, aspect. All right, that is looking good. Okay, so um, our next element that we also rendered out of um, Mid Journey is I went in and did this. I did an old weather old weathered paper texture with creases blank and flat I don't want and my negative prompt was writing rips and tears and I was able to render out a bunch of paper textures and I think this is really important uh, for a horror movie like horror movies tend to go with a really weathered type of um, look to them uh, and it also gives the vintage feel because we're going for an 80s 80s vibe so now we're going to place that. Um, it's pretty cool that you can get all of this stuff 
how to mid journey. We're going to scale this up so it fits. Um, I'd like it like that. This is going to be on the top. Um, this is one of the few layers that I am not going to, um, I'm not going to harmonize. Um, I'm going to multiply it and look at that. <laughs> multiply that over and we get this beautiful texture over our, our, our elements here. Um, now we can kind of do some final tweaking. Let's, um, let's, let's go to our sky. Where's our sky here? Oh, uh, we got to unlock it. And I'd like to give it a little bit more. There we go. We can give it a little bit more of a, um, of a transfer or opacity. Um, and the reason was, was it was blending in with the steeple. The steeple was kind of disappearing into the back. All right, so the sky looks pretty good. Um, looks really good. Now there's one last thing that an 80s horror movie poster needs. And that's a cheesy tagline. All right, so, and I got one. <laughs> All right. So, what we're going to do, uh, I don't want this to compete with my my um, title uh, font, so I want something plain. Um, oops, let's get to Myriad uh, Pro. We need our cheesy tagline. There is more than fish biting on the cape this summer. All right, so let's come on. That's some, that's some grade A cheese right there. So what we want to do is we want this above the top. Uh, we're going to go to our transform tool. We're going to make sure it's on canvas. We're going to center it. Now the thing is, is it's. The way it is, is it's uh, competing a little too much with our title. So what we want is horizontally, we want it smaller than our title. Obviously vertically too. Um, I centered it uh, at, proportionally from the center, so it is still centered. Now the other thing is now that it, it has the same contrast, as Payne's Creek, the title. So I want to change that too. Um, and to do that, I want to select a color from the poster. And I'm going to select somewhere in this hair. It's got to have enough contrast. But it also, there we go. All right, I think that is it. That is our poster. Look at that. If that doesn't scream 80s horror movie, I don't know what does. All right, we just created a badass 1980s zombie movie poster starring you. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you go through this and make your own, or when you go through it and make your own, um, please tag me, show me, share with it. I, I want to see all of them. Um, this, this was a, um, a really great uh, project to work on. I love it. I love the way it turned out. I think I'm going to print it, hang it up. My wife will be impressed. She'll be, you know, back to her acting days. Uh, if you could do me a favor and like, this video comment and subscribe to my channel that would be great all right until next week